Hello again everyone, this is Game Collector here, and today I have with me Transformers Generations Fall of Cybertron Decepticon Brawl. Let's get a look at that box and get this out of the way, because he's the last one before we move on to the big thing that you're looking at right now. So, here's his bio. Hope you have time to pause as soon as the camera gets into focus. You finished? Well, good. Okay, his bio is out of the way, so now we go on to his tech specs. Strength 9, Intelligence 4, Speed 4, Endurance 9, Rank 5, Courage 8, Fire Blaster, Fire Power 8, and Skill 3. There's no other way to put it. He's a mighty glacier. And here we are on the side with the Bruticus, the rendered Bruticus. He's series one number seven. Swindle was series one number five. I might as well just cover those in the Bruticus review anyway. Uh, build giant robot. Part five of five. Yay! Last one. And why does he have Shockwave's gun? Or is that an Energon harvester? I don't know. I've never actually played Fall of Cybertron because I don't. Eh, never gonna. Not even gonna go there. Okay, I'm going to put that to the side, and here we go, he's a green tank. And yeah, these... These little back bits are supposed to plug into these ports here. They don't, so you kind of have to push down and hope they stay there. Thankfully, mine are tight enough to where they'd only pop up if I press down like that. And the turret can swivel all the way around both ways. And it can also do that. So you have a backwards facing tank. Or a mortar. Or something. Howitzer? I don't know. So before we go taking them into robot mode, turn these, pull that up. This will come into play later, but you know what? Fold these back down. It makes getting the gun out a lot easier. Pull the gun out, and I'll probably be putting the gun back in there later on anyway. Fold these back in so they don't, so this doesn't come out. These basically, if you turn them so they're facing like this, they lock there. It's unlocked, and you can do that. And then when you turn them back, it locks it in place. Okay. First of all, we're going to move this up, that up, and that giant ratchety piece up. So we can move these out of the way. And then pull these down and fold them forward. And then flip these little feet down. What are these block parts on the side? I'll get to that later. Okay. Now, pull the arms down. And do like so. Pull out, fold up fists. And then you can pretty much place all this stuff back the way it was, mostly. Also the head, which is... Oh, we're right. I have to get this middle midsection. There. Because his abdomen has to be out in order for him to turn into a tank. Now you pull the head out and up. And there you go. Now, since the Japanese version, there have been pictures released. And this means you can actually have his... Stand up! Stand up. Don't make me get a prop in here, because I don't want one. Finally. He's a camera up a bit. Now, I'm going to handle him again, which means he's not going to want to stand up. There are two ways you can have the shoulder. This is the traditional way. 
and then you can fold them up, flip them over, and do like so. This does not affect posability in any way. It just changes his aesthetic. That's it. It just makes him look a little bit different. It does, however, make his chest not want to fold out all the way, so I can't really suggest doing that. But I can show you it with one arm like this and one arm like this. So the shoulder isn't much to brag about. Yes. His elbow is on a ball joint, so you can do that. The transformation here allows him to aim up and down, obviously. And you have that. Now, to this side, which is in the Japanese form. And nothing of value is lost. So now I'm going to make the camera go all wonky and then reset his arm to the traditional method. So now he has a ball jointed hip. He has, yeah, ball hip joints which don't particularly like going out too far. They go in, especially on his left leg, but um, he has a deep ball jointed knee. Or not a ball jointed, a hinge joint knee. Why did I say ball joint? I don't know. So he can go deep like that, and a little tiny foot joint, which will also come into play in the next video. His head is on a ball joint, not that it matters, because it's really hard to get a good grip on. Come on, come on, come on, there you go. But at least he can look down and look up, unlike some of his other teammates. And here's his little itty bitty tiny gun. And then he falls over because he's embarrassed about how tiny his gun is. <coughs> yeah, you heard me. So let's see if I can make him stand up proper. Probably not. And then you can also make his guns... on his back go about that far forward so he has anti-air guns on his back yeah he just has anti-aircraft cannons on his back and along with his other four not onslaught buddies he has two other modes that I will be showing off in the next video which I'm not sure when I'll release it because this is the first time I'm doing six videos in a month. Seven if I do another figure fix-ups. But, meh. This is all pre-recorded anyway, so if you hear any of that, disregard it. And I will see you all next week with the final part of the Combaticons. Oh, wait, wait. No. No, wait, don't, don't close it, don't, please. Because I have to show you that he's the only Combaticon with gun storage. Yeah, there you go. The gun stores neatly on his back, giving him three anti-aircraft guns on his back. Good for shooting at jet fire and the aerial bots. Because, well, who else are the Combaticons going to fight? Certainly not Metroplex. Maybe Omega Supreme. And, well, that's been Swindle. Not Swindle. Why can't I get their names right? Brawl. I already did Swindle. Little yellow greedy. So, with that, I will see you at the last Combaticon review. And it's going to be big. In more ways than one. Later.